Hi, I'm Tina Jones. I have uh, written down my eight tips for getting started on a low carb diet. And some of these uh, things uh, will be, um, uh, t th they're all tips for preparedness. They're not going to tell you exactly, you know, what you should be uh, eating to go low carb. Uh, you can find that information on Atkins' site, on uh, um, low carbing among friends, on about.com's uh, low carb uh, portion. And uh, this is going to be about getting ready for it. Um, and there's some preparedness that, that helped me quite a bit. And uh, the first thing was celebrate the start. Many times it, with uh, with this and with other diets, other things in life, I would tell myself that once I get to such and such goal, I will buy myself a, a new pair of jeans, or I will uh, get the nail polish that I want, or I'll I'll do something with my hair, or uh, or I'll treat myself to a special meal, or or whatever. And what I would urge you to do is to celebrate here and now that right now exactly the way I am the way we are we deserve to be treated well we deserve to be treated like someone who is succeeding like someone who is worth loving because we are exactly like we are and you don't have to do anything to earn that it's right here and it's right now the second thing is to uh, donate high carb foods so, uh, what I would do before is I would tell myself, well, yes, I have this, you know, uh, loaf of bread here, and I have these boxes of macaroni and cheese and that bag of rice and and uh, this, uh, this uh, oatmeal and those french fries in the freezer, but I can't waste food. My folks, my folks taught me not to waste anything, and I can't waste food, so I'm going to eat that, and then I'll get started. It sounds very noble, and it is, and it's it's a good thing, and we don't like to waste things, and in this economy, we don't like wasting things. I'd just like you to consider one thing, that if you are feeling bad because of how you've been eating, and you, uh, you've gained some weight, and maybe have some medical issues, that when we've eaten the french fries and eaten the frozen pies and the donuts and buns we were wasting our bodies now my uh, my predecessors didn't teach me that it was okay to waste my body and I can't waste my children's mother my friend's friend you know, my loved one's loved one. I, I can't waste my significant other's significant other. I'm important to other people. And I can't waste me. I can't treat someone they love like that. So, if I don't want to uh, waste, you know, the, fo the foods that are high carb that I don't want to eat anymore, um... I will uh, bag them up sometime, and I would bring them to a neighbor. Because I say sometimes, because I've I've had lapses in this, where you know I've gotten off track for a while. So I'll put them in a bag, bring them to a neighbor. There is a uh, there is a uh, church mission here that accepts food donations, and I am sure that there is some family out there who would be thrilled to have it. And that's not a waste. It's doing something very good with it. If you have someone who lives with you who eats that stuff. Try to get them out of your sight, and I'll cover that in just a minute. Um, but uh, no longer can I put that stuff in my body in any honesty and tell myself I'm doing it because I'm not wasting anything. Because I'm wasting me when I do it. And that's not okay. So, the next thing is, number three, is get more rest. I get more rest. And, um... Naps used to be a thing of luxury, and I even would consider myself lazy if I took a nap, and I'd think bad about myself. And again, to rethink it, our bodies heal best when we are sleeping. Our, our bodies um, 
you know, we'll, we'll use up our fat when we're resting. We lose more weight when we're sleeping than we do when we're up, you know, uh, unless you are running marathons from the beginning, and I was not, I could not. So, you know, consider taking a nap. And also one more point, uh, again, toward loving ourselves. If I have a small child, I, I, I have small grandchildren right now, and they needed a nap, would I deny them that nap or think that they were lazy? If I have, uh, let's say, an older aunt or uncle or a, a grandparent who, who needs the rest and I think that they were lazy, no, not at all. Why do I think that about me? I have to treat myself as lovingly as most of us by nature treat everyone else. And that's a big challenge. But that's one of the things to prepare. And I'll tell you, that's a tough one and it's an ongoing process. But it's okay for you to rest. And it's not a luxury. It's, uh, it's a necessity. Whenever you need to. And I'm someone who does it daily, every afternoon. And it may not be what you need to do. Um, but if your body gets tired and is giving you the signal of oh gosh I've got to have uh, you know I've got to go to Burger King McDonald's whatever and I've got to do it now and it's the middle of the afternoon between lunch and supper chances are you're tired and a lot of times at first we can't tell the difference between tired thirsty or having to go and get high carb food so every time I get that signal I check am I tired I take a nap am I thirsty I get some water okay uh, next one number five I incorporate a mug of bullion a day and the reason is see I'm no longer going to the fast food places I'm no longer buy, buying frozen enchiladas and <laughs> you know full of salt all this kind of stuff so very suddenly I'm without salt and if I start feeling um, lethargic and a little bit confused maybe start to be teary a little bit I may be low on sodium there's also you can be low on potassium uh, that's going to take uh, your green vegetables will we'll help you with that and uh, if it that's persistent see a doctor but very often what will cure this for me is one mug of bullion every day so that's to, something to add I give myself an area for foods we deserve a space in our own homes and many of us as uh, wives or moms, grandmothers, have dedicated our lives to the care of uh, significant others, of children, and of grandchildren, and even pets. And we did it because we love doing it. It's absolutely our joys. And what I want to tell you is, I can give more to these people that I just, I, I shine when I'm helping these people when I'm taking care of them I, I love doing that stuff when I take care of me first I can give them more if I don't can't take care of me what's gonna happen is I'm gonna be too tired to do things I want for them I'm gonna feel bad about myself I'm not going to be able to play with them because I'm going to gain more and more and more weight and I'm gonna feel bad about myself so in order for me to be true to those people that I want to so much, I have to be true to me first. Okay? And that's going to be an area for my foods. And what I uh, did in the beginning, I was uh, married at the time, and I designated a whole cabinet just to myself. Just me. And in that cabinet held my salsa, which is fairly low carb. It held my green vegetables. It held uh, anything that was safe for me. I had pork rinds in there and beef jerky. I had tuna in there. I had olives, canned olives in there. What I knew, I had I had you know, a jar jars of nuts in there. What I knew is that if I'm hungry, I can go direct. Tina goes to that cabinet, and when I open that cabinet, I can eat anything that's in there not have to think about it a whole lot and I'm going to be safe I'm not going to blow 
my diet for that day and I'm not going to feel bad about myself when I'm done. And usually what would happen is I'd go in there, I'd get some pork rinds or I'd get some nuts or open a can of tuna and I'd eat that and I'd, I'd, I'd feel better and I wouldn't be panicking, you know, after a short while. And then I could go ahead and think about, okay, what am I going to cook for us for dinner? But that cabinet was mine. That was my go-to uh, emergency place that was always where I went. I didn't have to stand in front of a refrigerator with the door open wondering what was going what, what I was going to find because I also had my space on the shelf. I had a little drawer and I loved the little meat drawers because that's where I kept my cold meats. I kept uh, things like deviled eggs in there, uh, all kinds of things. And I'm going to get into planning your fast foods and that, that ties in with it. That's seven. I rarely feel famished anymore, and uh, but there are times when when I have, and some of these things that I plan is like uh, once or twice a week I'll boil like nine boiled eggs, and uh, I let them cool a little bit, and I put them in a bowl unpeeled, and I just put those in the refrigerator. Any time I want to, any time of the day, I stop by my fast food egg bowl, and I grab one of those and I peel it. And I put a little salt on it, get a tall glass of water, and eat it. And I'm satisfied for another hour or two. And that was one thing, too. I, it did me better to eat about every two hours, whether it was something small like an egg, small piece of cheese, something like that. Uh, also, cheeses are important. And I would tell you to uh, uh, get your, your staple, whatever that is. For me, it would be cheddar and American cheese, but also splurge a little bit. This is part of the celebration thing. If there's some cheese you've been putting off getting uh, because you spend too much on macaroni and cheese, go ahead and get the Havarti, whatever it is that you want, and have that in there as part of, part of your fast food store. Also consider almonds. I know 10 of those are one carb. 10 olives, the green stuff, green olives, they are, um, they are one carb. So those are some quick choices that, you know, uh, that are easy to get to. All right. Uh, also, I usually will, once a week, I will cook a roast or I will cook a whole chicken just to have it in the refrigerator so I can grab some protein when I want to. And uh, that's another one of my fast food things. And that's kind of beside meals or, or whatever. I, I don't really, I live alone now, so I don't uh, plan uh, big meals. I, I just, uh, mainly I'm just doing you know, a few hours, and, and right now it's probably four or five hours that I go between and I don't really need anything. And those two hours will spread out over time. But uh, I probably have five meals a day. Um, so I don't do like the three meals. That's what I meant before, not just for meals. I don't do three. I probably eat like five times a day. And uh, I uh, I may, you know, I'll, I'll have like, uh, let's say I'm having pork tenderloin. That's my roast for the week. And uh, I'm thinking, you know, a meal with the pork tenderloin and, and uh, my uh, spinach. And uh, I may have like a double or triple serving of spinach. I love that stuff. Or maybe it's asparagus or something like that. Well, you know, it, it, I, may, I may do that that day. Uh, you know, and have a couple of thick slices of my tenderloin. I might, uh, you know, put, uh, I love to just put mayonnaise on it. I just, I just love that. Anyway. Uh, you may, I may have like a hollandaise sauce or something like that or some salsa with it, some cheese on it. But that, that'll be my plan and what I'll, in, what I'll do sometimes is that I'll end up going in there and, uh, and I'll be, you know, hungry and I'll, I'll just go in there and grab a piece of my tenderloin because I, I chop it up right after it cools off and I have it ready for the week. And uh, I'll grab a piece and then, you know, two hours later I, I'm in there thinking, Ooh, I like that spinach sounds good right now, so I'll get me a I'll get me a little bowl and I'm eating spinach. Two hours later I'm having some more tenderloin and then I'm having a piece of cheese. So however it works out, you know, you can put them together or spread them out a little bit. A car in the purse. I uh I've had a I've had a problem in the car. You get stuck somewhere, you don't have anything low carb to eat, and the family stops at a place where it seems like the only thing they're serving is battered everything with fries. So what I have in my purse, and this is for, or there's just no place to stop or whatever, is that I will usually have uh, some, uh, I'll, I'll keep like little baggies or I'll have an old uh, can of nuts and I will have almonds in there and I will have uh, beef jerky in there. 
Now I may also bring with me for that day, I may bring a little uh, sandwich or snack bag with uh, 10 or 20 olives in it. Like if I know I'm going to do a road trip that day. And I'll, I'll, I'll eat those on, on the road and that will get me through oh five or six hours of driving if I need to. And my children live five and a half hours away. So that can do that. I can also chop up a little cheese and bring it with me. But I can leave things like nuts or the beef jerky in the car uh, overnight most of the time without anything even happening. But uh, I have to have those with me. Usually have a couple small sticks of beef jerky in my purse and watch those. Slim Jim is a uh, low carbohydrate. Jack Link's uh, has about five times the amount of carbohydrates because it has quite a bit of sugar in it. So uh, Slim Jim's my favorite. All right, and that was my eight tips. And I have quite a bit more written on this in my blog in, in a little more detail and uh, some notes on other things that helped me to begin. Thank you for watching. Take care of you. And I am having a wonderful time. I wanted to tell you all, thank you so much for your comments. And you have been above and beyond wonderful and I want to remind you that you're not alone in this you've uh, you've got me and uh, you've got each other and loads of support out there and I'll have information on that in my blog thank you for watching bye bye